right, so uh, thanks for the introduction. I'm Chen, and I'm a lecturer from the University of Edinburgh. So uh, I'm going to talk about some of the um, deep learning techniques for the MR image reconstruction. Uh, we know the acquisition speed of MRI is fundamentally limited due to both hardware and physiological constraints. So the long scan time does not only increase the burden for patients, but also makes the image susceptible to emotional artifacts. Well, uh, we know the uh, raw data of the signal are acquired in the K space, uh, which is the frequency domain of the signal. And then after the inverse Fourier transform, this can be transformed back to this image space. So to accelerate this acquisition process, uh, most of these approaches consider to undersample the data in K-space. However, due to the violation of the Nyquist sampling, uh, the reconstructed images will be uh, very aliased. So now the, uh, the problem is, if we can reconstruct uh, the images from this uh, alias signal space back to the fully sample signal space. So traditionally, people use compressed sensing approaches and here I'm going to talk more about some deep learning based methods. So for some of you who might not be familiar with deep learning, so deep learning is a subset of machine learning methods, which consists of multiple and deep neural networks. So deep neural networks were uh, inspired by the human brain for processing data for the use of image detection or decision making. And normally to train a deep neural network, it requires a large amount of this training data. The so convolutional neural network has become extremely popular in recent years. So it uses these convolutional filters to extract these feature maps uh, in a way that resembles uh, the animal's viral cortex. So a convolutional neural network has been shown to be uh, very effective for these image-related applications such as image segmentation and image enhancement. So deep learning for image reconstruction has also uh, raised a lot of interest in recent years. So one of the group of these methods are uh, uh, data-driven approaches, which aims to learn image enhancement between this zero field initializations uh, with this, uh, uh, this fully sampled reference data. So here there is uh, no prior knowledge incorporated in these neural networks. So the data consistency between these uh, reconstructions and the raw data cannot be really guaranteed. Well, in contrast to these data-driven approaches, another group of methods are based on uh, model-based methods, which aim to learn an unrolled optimization scheme that iteratively uh, update these images while imposing these data consistencies. So here we've seen the original uh, raw data has been incorporated in these learning processes, uh, so it can achieve a much better reconstruction result compared to that data-driven approaches. So uh, here in my talk, I'll be mainly focusing on uh, talking about these model-driven me uh, methods. So most of these model-based approaches are based on this uh, traditional compressing formulation where given an observation Y in K-space, here we'd like to reconstruct the image X. So uh, the reconstruction problem can be formulated as an inverse problem, which consists of a data fidelity term and the regularization term. So here to uh, solve this uh, optimization methods, we like to introduce an auxiliary variable Z and then relax this method to uh, this optimization to an unconstrained optimization. And then based on this, we can adopt some alternative minimizations to, uh, to iteratively update uh, the intermediate variable Z and the, uh, uh, the, the reconstruction Z. So here we've seen the first step is a proximal operator which can be viewed as an image denoiser in this context. And then the, the second step is a data consistency term. So how can we leverage deep learning to uh, improve this reconstruction process? So here what we propose is to uh, employ these deep neural networks to model the first, uh, the first step of this reconstruction. So here instead of explicitly uh, 
imposing some of these regularizations on the data, uh, such as in this uh, compressing approaches. Here we use a deep neural network uh, to implicitly capture these regularizations from the data that is performed uh, routinely every day. And then we see the second step can give us a closed form solution. Then it's easy for us to explicitly embed it into uh, the deep neural network as a data consistency layers. So then this uh, reconstruction uh, can be viewed as uh, iterative projections between this manifold of these plausible images uh, that is formed by the deep neural networks and also the manifold of these data consistent layers. And since the original uh, raw data has always been incorporated in the learning processes and also uses some of the, uh, the Fourier transform operators, so some, uh, some group of the literatures also uh, group these type of approaches as physics informed learning methods. So based on this deep learning formulation, I like to introduce a work called the Convolutional Recurrent Neural Networks for Dynamic MRI Image Reconstruction. So we, uh, we, the recurrent neural network is a class of neural networks uh, which maintains a memory and then to use that for, for processing the sequential information. So here in our particular problem, the dynamic camera reconstruction, so there exist two dimensions of such of this sequential information. So the first one uh, we see is the dynamic data, uh, that is the temporal dimensions. And the second one is such iterative optimization process. And we view these iterative steps uh, also as a sequential, uh, sequential steps. So here from the, uh, the left diagram, we've seen that we have used a uh, deep neural network, uh, which is named as CRN as this, uh, the first steps of these formulations. And then this is followed by a data consistent layers. And more specifically here, uh, we propose an, a CRN I unit that is to embed this iterative optimization process in a learning setting, which has such hidden to hidden connections between each of these iteration steps that allows the contextual information that learned from the previous iteration to be propagated to the future ones. And secondly, to uh, explore the uh, spatial temporal redundancies, here additional bidirectional convolutional recurrent unit is, ex uh, is introduced that to exploit this bidirectional spatial temporal information along the temporal axis. So here, uh, this is the first work that have been proposed to use uh, RNs on dynamic MR reconstruction. And by uh, comparing it with this traditional compressing approaches, as well as some of these deep learning baselines, we've seen the uh, CRN network can achieve a much better performance compared to these compressing methods, especially around the uh, regions of these uh, dynamic regions. And this is a result from uh, nine times under sample data. And then uh, quantitatively, we've seen that under different, different under sampling rates, the proposed approaches, or in general, the deep learning approaches can outperform the KTSLR. And in particular, the proposed R network uh, gives a much better improvements. Also, uh, it also gives a much faster reconstruction speed compared to this KTSLR methods. So apart from uh, using deep neural networks to, uh, for the MRME reconstruction in this image domain, as I just introduced, uh, we can actually use deep neural network in some other transform domains for this reconstruction. And here I'd like to introduce another work called KT Next which is shorted for KT network with XF transform. So from the method title, we've seen that uh, we propose to exploit this KT correlations in XF domain. Uh, we know that the periodic cardiac motion, due to such periodic motions, the signal in XF space is very sparse. So the compression method also utilizes such properties for the reconstruction in this uh, transform domain. And here, similarly, we like to utilize a convolutional neural network for this uh, reconstruction in XF space. 
And specifically, we see the input to this network is an XF signal, and we've also reconstructed the space, uh, reconstructed the, uh, the signal in this XF space. And then uh, we've also uh, have uh, another image space reconstruction follow this MS XF space due to it can provide us with some uh, complementary information. And then this uh, entire reconstruction pipeline can be performed by alternating between both this XF and image domains. And from this reconstruction results, we can also see that the uh, reconstructions uh, from this KT next, uh, from this uh, complementary domains can perform this compressing approaches as well as this image domain only reconstructions. So uh, what I have introduced earlier was still uh, based on some uh, single coil uh, simulation settings. However, we know the parallel imaging is uh, a default setting in the MR scanners and most frequently used to accelerate this MR data acquisition. So uh, we can uh, uh, slightly reformulate this compressing formulations of in the parallel imaging based on the sensitivity encodings. Here we've seen how the SI uh, uh, denotes this I coil sensitivity map. So can we use deep learning to address this uh, clinically uh, more applicable scenarios? So here in parallel imaging, I like to introduce uh, another work called KTVS Next, which is an extension of the work of this KT Next I've just introduced, and also the VS Net. So here specifically, we uh, we formulate this uh, dynamic parallel MR model in in a way like this, which consists of also a data fidelity term and, and regularization terms. So to utilize this dynamic data, here we have a regularization term on the XF domain that is to exploit this sparsitase in this domain uh, with FT as the temporal Fourier transform. So uh, similarly, to solve this optimization problem, uh, we use the variable splitting method that where we introduce these auxiliary variables to decouple these regularization terms with that of data fidelity terms and then alternative minimization method uh, can be used to iteratively update each of these uh, variables. So how can we uh, use deep learning to model this? So similarly here, we uh, again propose to use this deep neural network uh, to implicitly learn these regularizations uh, from the data. So here specifically, we have an XFCRN here that is to model the first step of this reconstruction that is for this XF domain reconstruction. And then uh, image domain reconstruction is performed by using this IMCRN. So this enables that the reconstructions uh, can, be, uh, can be performed on both domains simultaneously. And then from the, uh, the uh, solutions from the, the, uh, the third step, uh, we can derive a coil-wise data consistencies, and then we can incorporate it into this neural network as well. And lastly, we have also derived a weighted combination from these formulations, which combines the estimation from these different steps. So by using, uh, in, so by uh, reconstructing the images in the parallel image setting, we can further push the acceleration factors uh, in the cardiac images. So here we've shown results that performed on the 16 times under sample data. And we can see the proposed approaches and all these deep learning approaches, which is the uh, last three columns, show promising results and better performance compared to this state-of-the-art compressing methods. And particularly, uh, we can uh, further push uh, the acceleration factors up to 24 times, and they still can uh, result in a very good reconstructions. And also here, if the acceleration factor is 16 or higher, it can result in a possibility of achieving the acquisition in a single breadfold. Yeah, so beside these works, there are also some other works that tackle the different aspects or different challenges in this MR reconstructions. So now I'm not going to details of these. Uh, please feel free to check them if you're interested in this. 
So one of the uh, major concerns for deep learning in medical imaging is the need for the big data. So there has been great efforts towards this goal. We know the fast MRI challenge, which is held by Facebook AI and NYU, which provides us with a large databases of MR raw data, such as over 1,000 MRI and more than 7,000 of neural MRI. So these uh, this data provides us with a big opportunity to investigate deep learning methods for the MR image reconstruction and also to push the uh, using AI for accelerated MR imaging. And also our team, Holy Case Space, uh, also participated in this challenge last year and our work ranked the second among all these participants. So if you're interested in how deep learning can be used to address this, uh, this generalized uh, and more uh, data with more varieties, uh, please have, have a check of this work. So uh, to summarize, uh, we've seen that deep learning has shown a very promising results in reconstructing MR images uh, in terms of both this reconstruction quality and speed. And we can incorporate this prior knowledge into this learning process and also embed the physical model into the deep neural networks, uh, which has shown to be very uh, uh, effective for these reconstructions. And then uh, deep learning has also shown its capabilities to improve this imaging workflow in radiology. And we also provide us with a huge potential for the future of MR image reconstruction. However, most of these existing approaches are still based on a simulated scenario and has limited clinical value. So to establish deep learning for image reconstruction in a clinical examinations, we definitely need more efforts uh, investigating deep learning for more clinical uh, as applicable scenarios and also require thorough evaluations. So the work I've introduced were mostly uh, published and has also been open sourced. So if, so if you are interested in uh, seeing how, uh, how this works, please have a check on our GitHub page for the code. So lastly, I'd like to thank all my colleagues from the Bell Media Group at Imperial College London for their efforts in, their contribu in the contribution to these works. Okay, thanks for listening, watching, and I'm happy to take any questions.